Good evening. Before we really get going, everybody who had something to do, all the volunteers and staff who made Pacificon hap happen, thank you. So, it has been an amazing show. This is my second time here and absolutely love this. So, since we're already on the thank yous, I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to everyone else. Thank you are two words that often get left out or undersaid. Um, so thank you. Thank you for your membership, thank you for your support, and thank you for being active in the amateur radio community. Um, my name is Steve Goodgame, K5ATA. I am the Education and Learning Manager at ARRL, as well as the IARU Region 2 Youth Coordinator. Prior to taking this role a little over two years ago now, I was a classroom teacher in public schools for 21 years. So, thank you. Many, many of those years, I was afforded the opportunity to introduce students to amateur radio and wireless technology. It's safe to say I've learned a thing or two about reaching youth along the way. In my position at ARRL, I'm charged with all things learning and am blessed with the opportunity to help not only established hams, but newcomers as well. And trust me, it is absolutely critical that we reach the newcomers and help them engage in amateur radio. Before we get too far along, though, I have a question. It's going to actually require you to talk, not on the air, and discuss briefly. So if you would, take a moment and discuss among your group what the word inspire means. Inspire. As I see people hugging, this is entertaining. Not perspire, inspire. So if you were to ask Google to define the word inspire, which is where kids go first most of the time, you're going to find that it's <clears throat> the, uh, yeah, excuse me. You'll find the word inspire means to fill someone with the urge or desire to feel or do something to fill people with the urge or desire to feel or do something. Is that close to what you came up with? Yes. Okay. You may be wondering what exactly this has to do with you, with me, or with anybody in the room. What I'm here to tell you is it has absolutely everything to do with amateur radio and with all of us. We are charged with the opportunity to inspire the next generation of amateur radio operators. Some would say it's more of a task, a job, than an opportunity. I would argue that it's a privilege and an honor to have the opportunity to help shape the future of amateur radio. It's happening early, Rick. So in my 21 years in the classroom, I consider myself blessed to have had the opportunity to introduce hundreds of students to amateur radio. No doubt I had some successes. Almost 60 new hands were licensed during those years. I also learned some hard lessons along the way. And those lessons stay at the forefront of my mind in everything I do at ARRL. One of those lessons is tied to a grainy old picture of four kids that I include in almost every slideshow that I share and you'll see in a few minutes. What was that lesson? If we fail to engage youth after they get licensed, we have failed altogether. See, those kids you're gonna see in a little bit, Colleen, Nathan, Alex and Alejandro all got their tickets at the ripe old age of 10. At the age of 20, all of them let their tickets expire. <clears throat> the reason, I moved from Texas to Mississippi, and when I moved, there was no one there to fill the gap. No one was there to, to engage the students, and so as a result, we lost four young hams. I brought that lesson and everything else I do through the year, or everything else I learned through the years to H HQ on September 6, 2021 and dove right in. I had things I wanted the education arm to accomplish. I set goals and with the support of CEO David Minster and the board of directors, thank you, we got to work and we started making progress on those goals. We started checking off boxes as complete and gaining momentum. 
It was then that I started to realize something was missing. Well, maybe not missing, but misplaced. Just out of order. It was like having a wheel on your car slightly out of balance. You hardly notice it at the beginning, but the faster you get going, the more pronounced it becomes. Depending on the destination and the speed at which you're moving, sometimes you're willing to keep rolling. But as you pick up speed, the bounce becomes real. I started to realize we could do things better. We could run things more efficiently, we could have better reach, and we could insp inspire more youth and more teachers, more hams. What was that thing that was missing? Vision. You see, goals are great. The internet's full of people who will tell you the very first thing you need to do when you start something new is set goals. Set goals and start ticking boxes. There's information everywhere about how to set goals. What kind of goals to set, etc. I think in my world, that advice is wrong. Or at least in the wrong place on the agenda. You see, goals have limitations. Goals are finite. With a goal, there is a clear benchmark that can be checked off as complete and set aside, and you move on to the next one. Set a goal to get X number of kids licensed. What happens when you hit X? The intensity, intensity, the drive, and the aspiration of meeting the goal is already met. You have a sense of what now? What next? What is it that makes us say we should be more like X equals X plus one? Always strive to increase the value of that X. Vision's different. Vision is, as author Simon Sinek says, a part of the infinite game. You don't see the end, you just see the way. You only see the never-ending path of X equals X plus one. There is no end to the game, rather the goal of the game is to keep the game going, to perpetuate its very existence. Vision is what inspires people. Goals are simply a means of getting there. Vision is what drives us to always reach for that plus one. The relationship between amateur radio and STEM education, it's an infinite road. And we have to keep that going. We must build that road. It must constantly be at the forefront of everything we do. This is part of my vision. Vision should drive our goals, not the other way around. Well, I had a vision when I started at HQ. I was doing things backwards. I was setting goals and trying to make them fit my vision, rather than letting my vision determine my goals. Letting my vision inspire my goals, our goals. Now, a couple more questions. Don't worry, you don't have to talk on this one. If you would, raise your hand if amateur radio had an impact on your career choice. Now, keep your hand up if amateur radio is your career. That means your livelihood is directly tied to amateur radio. <laughs> Not many of us are privileged enough to have our hand up, and that's telling. A few of us are privileged, but <clears throat> like I said, not all of us. You see, when looking at actual careers, there are very few that are directly tied to amateur radio. There are, however, multitudes of jobs and careers related to radio and wireless technology. As we approach schools to include amateur radio as a part of their STEM curriculums, we absolutely must relate those to career pathways and learning opportunities for students. Make no mistake, we must approach schools. They aren't coming to us. Amateur radio must be presented as a pathway to future learning and career opportunities as a tool to be utilized in STEM classrooms to help students engage in science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM. Amateur radio has the unique ability to serve as the perfect scaffolding tool for teachers and students to experiment and grow. The base of that scaffold is a solid foundation for students to experience electronics, radio, coding, engineering, and more. The best part about this scaffold is it reaches across the curriculum it literally touches every subject area. Radio is, in the words of Dolby Surround Sound, all around you. Everyone is constantly surrounded by it, but yet very few are fully aware of it. The key to engaging newcomers is to help them see that everything in their world is connected to wireless technology. Nothing cool happens without radio. So my vision. My vision is the very thing that has driven me to take the path in life that I've taken. To quote singer Rich Mullins, 
I believe what I believe is what makes me what I am. In teaching, any teachers in here, former teachers? Thank you. In teaching, teachers use I can statements. These are just simple statements that determine what a kid should be able to do at an end of a lesson. Today, I'm gonna to use I see statements to try to convey my vision to you. In my vision, I see wireless technology as an integral part of STEM educa education. I see students in classrooms using amateur radio as a tool for learning. I see kids building kits and antennas, putting them to use, learning from mistakes, and trying again, persevering until they succeed. I see kids making contacts around the world, discovering and exploring a variety of cultures. I see kids using digital modes, even FT8, <laughs> and looking for ways to make them better, digging into the code to find out what makes it work, experimenting. I see kids learning about space communications, exploring the universe through radio, talking to astronauts, communicating through satellites, and eavesdropping on the universe, asking themselves later, what else can I listen to? I see kids asking questions like, what if I tried this? Then not only being allowed, but encouraged to find out. Teachers providing just enough guidance to keep things moving and keep them from burning their fingers too badly. <laughs> Allowing students to become inspired by what they learn. I see kids being taught not what to think, but how to think. I see teachers using amateur radio to inspire students to learn. I see us, a community of hams, helping to spread the word about amateur radio, what it is, what it could be, and what it can do for students. Changing that statement of I see to we see, it absolutely must be a we thing. You, the hams in this room, the hams around the world, are all ambassadors to reach kids and help them have even better opportunities than we had. All goals we set must feed that vision. We must be intentional and inspire students and teachers. I spend countless hours talking to others about how to engage schools and youth. Today we're talking about why. Why it's critical that we position amateur radio as the perfect tool for STEM education. Many years ago, amateur radio was a part of many schools. Schools had ham radio, radio clubs. Kids were introduced to the concepts of radio, electronics, and experimentation. We are those kids. Amateur radio slowly made its way out of schools. As broader STEM curriculums were adopted, schools searched for ways to teach those standards, and amateur radio got left behind. The failing is on us, not any one of us, but all of us. As a community of hams, we failed to keep amateur radio relevant to education as it evolved. As such, very few schools have the vibrant amateur radio clubs that we enjoyed as youth. And I'm telling you, if we're going to change this, the time for action is now. We absolutely must do a better job <clears throat> excuse me, at reaching youth and teachers to help them elevate their STEM programs using radio and wireless technology. We must inspire them. The STEM space is still evolving, still trying to find its way. It isn't too late. But we must move, and we must move now. Schools are desperate for STEM curriculum that provide meaningful connect connections between concept concepts being learned and real life possibilities. Kids, by their very nature, dream big and want to explore. Space exploration is huge in schools, and we're creating and cultivating partnerships with groups like NASA, ARIS, the Limitless Space Institute, and Spectrum X, so we can all work together in engaging students in STEM education. We all see things the same way. It makes sense to work together. We all see that STEM education is critical to our kids' futures. All too often, people get defensive about their program to reach kids. I don't care what you may have read or heard. There is no competition here. I'm telling you now, if you are willing to work for the benefit of advancing amateur radio and STEM education, we need to talk. 
We know that clubs are a critical element for a ham getting and staying engaged in amateur radio. We must welcome our youth into our clubs. We must make efforts to involve them doing things that they are interested in. Clubs also serve as a crucial role in education outreach. Often teachers who attend Teachers Institute are new to amateur radio. I connect them to their division director, vice directors, and section managers in an effort to help them find clubs who, who can serve as mentors, as ambassadors, for them as they embark on their amateur radio journeys. This is the year of the volunteer, and as such, I have some special thank yous. Thank you to everyone who gives freely of their time to advance and promote amateur radio. To those of you who teach amateur radio instruction classes, thank you. VEs who give tests, thank you. Those who volunteer and are a part of the AWRL field organization, thank you. You see, I'm giving thank yous out, but I have one left to give. This one's actually a little ahead of its time. I'm thanking you for something you haven't done yet, but I have faith you will. After all, you are the ambassadors of amateur radio. Thank you for your help with our youth and STEM outreach. Thank you for your support, be it financial or in time, in helping teachers help kids have the same opportunities that we had. Amateur radio oper operators were doing STEM before STEM was a thing. We were the original makers before the first maker space was put in a school. We are the perfect group of people to make this happen. Make no mistake, we will make this happen. We are the AWRL, a community of hams, a gathering of ambassadors. And it's up to us to succeed. It's up to us to always strive for that plus one. I ask you, if not us, then who? Think about that. If not us, then who? Who's going to give kids today the opportunities that we had as kids ourselves? I leave you with this. How can you help? How will you help us engage more youth in amateur radio? If not us, then who? Thank you. <laughs>